Hey, what's up guys? Victor here with Individual Investor. Let's talk about beer. But actually, I'm referring to bond equity earnings yield ratio, which complements our previous discussion on Benjamin Graham's price to earnings ratio and the relationship between bond yields and PE ratios. Enjoy. The bond equity earnings yield ratio, in theory, is supposed to provide you with a signal on the direction that the stock market is going and whether the stock market is undervalued or overvalued. The ratio consists of dividing the benchmark of yields of bonds and stocks. In the case of the US market, you would take the 10-year US Treasury bond yield and divide that by the S&P 500 yield. And this also works for any other country or market as long as you put in the numerator the government bond yield for the particular country or market that you're looking into and divide that or put in the denominator the yield for an index that captures the broad stock market for that particular country or region. So to compute the bond equity earnings yield ratio for the US market, we first need to figure out the 10-year US Treasuries yield at the time of this video, which is about 1.57%. Then we need to find the earnings yield of the S&P 500, which we can calculate by taking the inverse of the PE ratio. In this case, we have a PE ratio of about 27.07 for the S&P 500. So if we divide bond yields by the inverse, of the P ratio, we get a ratio of 0 0.425. Now, what can you do with this information? Well, it seems that the market is way overvalued given that the ratio is way below one. But what does this exactly mean according to the proponents of this theory? If the stock market is overvalued, then the assumption is that the market is bullish and therefore stock prices are expected to continue to increase. So it is a good time to invest in stocks. And on the other hand, if the stock market is undervalued, then the assumption is that the outlook or the future of the market is bearish, which means that the stock prices will continue to decline. Therefore, it's not a good time to invest in stocks. The problem is that the market will be bullish or bearish until it isn't anymore. And that moment of change is very hard to time or predict. Let's look at some historical data from macrotrends.net that I summarized in this table for you. In the plot, we have the bond equity earnings yield ratio and S&P 500 index in the last 25 years. As you can see, in the years leading up to the 2008 crisis, the ratio was below one, so the market was overvalued. Then in 2009, the market was undervalued considered that the earnings yield for stocks was only 1.18%, while the bond yield was 3.26%. Then earnings yield started to increase while bond yield decreased, causing the ratio to remain below one up until now in 2021, and the S&P index continues to increase on average. Something that stood out for me in the last 20 years is what I'm highlighting here with the purple marks. Every time that the ratio crosses one, there seems to be a change in direction of the S&P 500 index. This could indicate maybe a potential buying or selling signal, but the major caveat here is that the market could continue to climb or drop for many months or even years until a bull or bear trend becomes obvious. And that's why most investors fail at timing the market and knowing exactly when to buy or when to sell. It is very tricky. Obviously, if you have access to, a, to the full data set and you're able to look at the historical data, then it is easy to come up with trends or explanations or, or draw conclusions based on, the, on, on this data and these patterns that you are seeing. However, it is a completely different story when you're presented with uh, new market conditions and new unknowns and you have to predict and time the market and know in which direction it will go and when 
uh, if you're looking to make uh, investment decisions. Most successful and safest strategies is to keep a large portion of your portfolio in an index fund that tracks either the S&P 500 or the total market uh, index because very simply you can just make frequent contributions to your fund or what is called dollar cost averaging or DCA and you don't have to care, you don't have to mind if the market is overvalued or undervalued because if you have a long-term horizon in mind then time will smooth out any losses and you will benefit from a average compound interest of 8% to 9% annually. And that's all I have guys, short and sweet. I would be curious to read your comments and feedback on this topic, so please leave them in the section below. Also, if you liked this video, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel to support my content. Thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.